see that right there. Alright, I'm going to come over here to my movie making program. As you can see, I'm going to double click that and open up my Sony Movie Studio Platinum. You just got through seeing it actually come up. You're seeing how I've done it now. When it's on TV, we do it in a 4-3 format. But I'm, on, I'm just doing it on the internet now, so I'm doing it wide screen, y'all. Wide screen. Now you see what it looks like. So what we're going to do is go up here and add media, it says. So what we're going to do is go to my two-tier storage. Two-tier storage. And go down here where it says TV show. Everything for my TV show is right here. So I'm going to double click that, bring it up, and uh, it's in icons and logos. And I go down here to intros, you see all my intros right here. Double click, and it says fixed intros. So I double click that. I right, see which one I want here. R and B. Let's go with this one right here. It's got a 10 second counter, but we're going to cut that off probably. And go with the, uh, and I'm going to pull it down. Let me make it small where I can see all of it. I'm going to pull this out here. I'm going to go get that three second counter now. Yep. And get it. It brings it up right here get it and put it right there and I slide that up to it let's go with wide screen right there apply there we go let's see what this looks like all right what we're gonna have to do here for this right here as you can see you're right here on the sides but we can crop it and make it widescreen right here. So it says 16-9 widescreen ratio. There we go. That's all they are to it. Now it's widescreen. Play it. I've got the sound cut down so you ain't gonna hear my... Everything's looking good so far. All right. That's how I've done it. I appreciate y'all watching this. And this is how I put the beginning on. I've already got them all make, uh, made up. So all I have to do is go get them and put them on here. And fix it up. Just like you just saw. Appreciate it. All right. We're going down here to one of my sponsors. They've stayed with me the whole time. You know, ever since I've been on TV, they've been one of my sponsors. Got some good food. So I figure we'll go down there and eat some good, some good country cooking here. Lee's Family Restaurant. They also have karaoke on uh, Tuesday night, 6 to 9 o'clock. But I'm going to take y'all down there. So that's what we're doing today, folks. We're going to eat us some good country cooking. Right here in the Summerton Dora area. So y'all get to go with us today. Down here at Lee's, we got karaoke started probably four years ago. And it's been going ever since, every Tuesday night. And if y'all hadn't checked it out, you need to check it out. Bring your kids, because this ain't no club. 
There's no alcohol here. There's no smoking in the place. It's a good place to come and sit back and bring the kids and do karaoke and be a star for three minutes. And right here, you can see across the road here, that's Lee's Family Restaurant. I'm going in here and eat me some good food. See y'all. Well, got to have some more red ink pens, so I'm going over to Walmart to get red ink pens. All right, you got to see how I made the beginning of the show there, and I uh, drove down to Lee's Family Restaurant, man. Go there all the time, eat some of that good country cooking. They got some of the best beef tips and rice around, y'all, on Sunday. Y'all need to go down there and check that out, man. They won't never give me none, though. No, I'm just, I'm just teasing there. And uh, Dave's got a good show. Had to change it up just a little bit. Had to take something off because uh, we're not going to Fort Payne this month. We may go next month, but we're not going in the month of March, so I had to change that up a little bit. So uh, we're going to do a bunch of interviews I've done over the years, and uh, some of the bands, and some you had not seen, some you have seen. So put your seatbelt on, here we go. I'm here with Amber Jean at Pub 261. Yeah, where do you see your music going? Well, where do you want it to go? Well, just like any independent artist, I mean, you, you dream real big and way far into the future, so I hope it'll take me, you know, super far. Um, where I mainly see it going, though, is for me to be able to play music for the rest of my life. I mean, it's my passion. I'm never going to stop playing. So when I'm 70, 80 years old, as long as I'm still able to go out and play for people and put my passion that's in my heart in somebody else's heart, then my goal is fulfilled. What about your music, the one you wrote? Where do you? I mean, I would love to get published one day. You know, to be a songwriter. If, if somebody else can cut one of my originals, that's great. As far as me being an artist, singing my own originals, then I hope that it's able to touch people, and I hope that I can get it out to as many people as I can. Just like all the artists out there, we want to push our music out there and let everybody hear it. So. What is your most memorable night that you can remember playing music? Um. I would say the first time I ever played at, at Fat Boys in Union, Georgia. It was the first show I had ever done, and I did not know what to sing. Because, I mean, I don't have any musicians anywhere in my family. No friends or musicians until now. But when I was first starting, I didn't know what to play. I didn't know what my set list needed to be. So I went into a bar singing, you know, Suds in the Bucket and Daddy's Hands. I didn't know what bar music was. So I think that's probably the most memorable, is being so nervous just to even sing. I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't say a word. Now I just cut up the whole show, so. Now, if somebody wants to find your music, how would they find your music? You can Google it. I've got a website. It's amberjeanmusic.com. My music um, is on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube and Google Play. Uh, my album is called Say It. That was my first album ever released. Um, and my most recent single is called White Trash Ho. Yes, I did write it to make someone mad. Yes, it did make someone mad. Yes, the goal was accomplished, but a lot of people have been put in that same situation as the song, and it's actually, it's a beautiful song. It's not as hilarious as people think it's gonna be. White Trash Ho actually has a great meaning to it. So let's find you on amberjeanmusic.com. That's it, amberjeanmusic.com. Anything on iTunes or anything it's like that? It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, and it'll just be under Amber, bleh, under Amber Jean. And that's J-E-A-N, not G-E-N-E. Man, everybody always thinks it's G-E-N-E, but Amber Jean. All right, I appreciate you talking to me, Amber Jean. That's me. And uh, y'all catch Amber Jean? Everywhere. Like, everywhere. Play everywhere there's a stage. <laughs> All right. You should know good men staying in the doorway in the sunset Maybe I had you wrong, baby, and it could be my mistake I was putting my heart and soul on the line Since you feel so down, it's a little more time To make up your mind when it's been long enough Time is up, baby. Catch a little guy that put 
family restaurant and dinner theater. The best country cooking around. Great dinner theater shows. Karaoke 6 to 9 on Tuesday. Call 648-4461. Now don't forget, Lee's has some great gospel shows coming in there. March of 16th, has got the Perry's. Y'all go down there and get your tickets for that, y'all. Here's the guys down at Bar 31, y'all. Henry, Mike, Kenny, and Greg. Razzmatazz, man. I interviewed each and every one of them. So here they are. Greg, how old was you when you first started playing music? Uh, when I first started professionally, I was about 17. 17? Still in high school. Okay. Do you remember your first gig? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where was it at? It was at uh, Coosa Island Marina on uh, Logan Martin Lake. Logan Martin. Do you remember the most memorable time of playing music? Uh, one of the most memorable times, I think, was when uh, I was in a band called Katie Riser. Uh huh. And we won the Salem Star Search Talent Contest in Birmingham. And uh, had a big final. Uh, uh, competition at Sunny Dew, and uh, we uh, we won it that night, and uh, that was a lot of fun and a lot of excitement. That night. Is KD Riser? Can you name some of the other bands you was in? Yeah, I was in a band called Fresh Air. I was in a band called uh, Texas Radio, which is an original country band. It was really good. A long time ago. Mike Welber and Kenny Welber. Uh, how was you, Mike, when you first started playing? I started playing when I was 13. 13? 13. 13. How about you, Kenny? I was about 10. <laughs> 10? <laughs> name some a couple of, of years ago. Name some of the bands you was in, Mike. I, I played in Revolver, and a, a group called Exhibit A. I played with uh, Ronnie Osborne for a while. And, yeah, I know uh, Ronnie. I played in a group called the Jam Babies, and then Brasmatan. And we played in Firestarter. Well, Firestarter, that's right. Firestarter. And Twisters. That's how about you, Kenny? Did you play any different? All the same one. All the same well, one? I well, I played in uh, Southern Crossroads Band. Uh, I remember them. Yeah, Rick Harris and Miles Harris. Yeah, we was called at the same time Southern Crossroads. My band was called The Crossroads. That's right. That's right. I remember that. <laughs> uh, what, what was your first gig? Do you remember it? Played at, uh, at Trinity Methodist Church, I believe. <laughs> um, we played a hoot nanny there at Trinity Methodist Church. I got some pictures. From That's that. right. That was there. Was you there too? That was yeah. the, that was his revolver, actually. What? Yeah, that was our first uh, big paying job. I think we made two dollars a piece or something. Hey, y'all said a while ago when I showed you his question, y'all's most memorable time playing was when you went to California. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was that deal about? We were on a show called Happening '68, where we were in a band competition. It was a uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders kind of show. Paul Revere hosted the show. And uh, we were on there playing against uh, other bands from all over the country. And we rode a bus out there. It took us longer to get there than we stayed there. And it took us longer to get back there. Henry, how old was you when you first got started? 14 years old. 14. Wow. Do you remember your first gig? Yeah, my first real job, big job, was uh, Duke and Dixieland for Duke Rumor at the Inslee Armory. The Inslee Armory. And do you remember your most memorable time playing music? My most memorable time, I believe, was with the Rock and Rebellions in uh, 67 when we played Garrett Coliseum with The Who and Herman's Hermans and a, a slew of other people there. And we had uh, about eleven or 12,000 people there. It was the most I ever played in front of them because at that time, Garrett Coliseum was a, probably the largest indoor building Alabama had. Wow. Child, don't care about me. Yeah, yeah. I'll change my heart. Baby, set me free. Come on. We'll unchain my heart. Where well, you don't care about me. So like a pillowcase, you let my love now go to waste. 
so untamed my heart. Baby, set me free. Unchain my heart. Unchain my heart. Baby, let me go. We'll unchain. Bar 31, razzmatazz down there. March the 17th, they're having a good St. Patrick's Day party down there. April the 6th is the 25th anniversary of razzmatazz. You need to go check it out. April the 6th. And April the 21st, all you people that used to go to Hogan's there, they're having a Hogan's reunion. And that's April the 21st. Go down there and check Razzmatazz out, y'all, at Bar 31. Of course, you don't go to Hogan's because Hogan's ain't there no more. So they go having that Hogan's reunion at Bar 31. All you Hogan's people, go on down there and help them celebrate. Midnight Special in Jasper. Friendly staff. Pooh. Darts. Open mic on Thursday. Karaoke. Bands. Open on Sunday. Midnight Special in Jasper. Me and Sonya went down to uh, Courtyard Alabaster. We was going to take Redemption. And when we got there, they had a acoustic act going on. So, Sonya interviewed this guy his name is nathan y'all check him out nathan he's got a website too y'all okay we're here at courtyard alabaster with my friend nathan here how long have you been playing music playing music yes long time uh since i was about 15 years old oh wow so. that's a long time yeah. good go ahead so do you write any songs Absolutely, yeah. Uh, original stuff is, is what I've really been focusing on lately. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm working on recording an EP right now, so it should be out in the next six months. Oh, wow, at, that's at awesome. Line, so. Sounds like a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it is a lot of fun. It is. I bet it's, it is. It's a lot of fun doing your own music. So. Yeah. So what would you say your most memorable time is? It's hard to say. Uh, a lot of them. Really just any time that, you know, I got into it and was feeling it and the crowd was feeling it. A couple times in particular in uh, Tuscaloosa, you know, yeah. on some game days, and, and you know, they were just really, they were really about it. So. Yeah, a lot and, of younger uh, crowds. And, and several times here at Courtyard Alabaster, because I play here every Monday, and uh, it's just every time that I get to meet these people that, you know, are into what I'm doing, and they, like, I realize that people really like what I'm doing, and I just, uh, every, every time is memorable for me. So. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Every time seems like it's memorable. It is. So where can everybody find you at? Um, the interweb, social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, my website, uh, NathanJacksonMusic.com, uh, on YouTube. I got some covers, got some originals. Uh, Nathan Jackson Music, one word, um, and uh, Twitter, uh, Nathan J Music. So uh, yeah, any of those uh, will be great. Media. I always post where I'm going to be at. I always post what I'm working on, what I'm doing, and love to hear from anybody that has any input. I'm a music and I'd love to hear from them, so yeah, hit me up guys. Dead gum it. Brad, come here, I need help on the computer.
Yeah, yeah, that right there. All right. That. Okay. Hey, I was going to tell a joke right here for my good friend, Crazy Girl, a.k.a. Christine. But I decided I'd tell a little story here. It's not a joke. It's real life. And see what you think about it. My first band was called The Crossroads. It had me, Roger, Dennis and Stan in it, four-piece band. We played at one of the toughest. They issued either a knife or a gun when you walked in the door, that kind of place. I mean, it was rough. They was either a cutting, a shooting, or a fight every single Friday and Saturday night. I don't know why we played there so long. I actually went through three bands while I was there. But there was this one night, I still remember the song we was playing. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Yeah, that's what we was playing. All of a sudden, I saw a folding chair going up and down. It was making a loud noise. I didn't think nothing about it because those people that that place would get pretty well lit up, and, and man, they they parted down there, in other words. When I get through, I'll tell you what place it was. Well, come find out, he was hitting somebody, of course, laying in the floor. What I didn't know, though, every time he would hit him and come back up, the guy would raise up with a knife and do this. There was three or four people got a little bit cut, not nothing serious, but they ended up getting him outside, and, and it had something to do with the TV. He stole somebody's TV or something like that. And uh, somebody said, we need to call the cops. And uh, one guy stepped up, and he said, you know, forget the cops. Throw him in the back of my pickup. I'll take him somewhere. I don't know where he was going to take him, but he was going to take him somewhere, probably tie a brick to his foot, probably something like that. Now, it was the pink lizard in Alliance, Maxine, Alliance. That's where it was at. Rough place, y'all. All right, here's an interview I did with my good friend, rest in peace, my buddy, Steve Dawkins. I did a little bit the other day, you know, several times ago. Uh, but this here, I'm going to put a little bit more on there of something different that we talked about. I hope y'all enjoy it. Rest in peace, my brother, Steve Dawkins. You know, I wasn't, no, wasn't musically inclined. I wasn't around it you, until y'all moved up there. You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all moved up there, and, and J.C., he he would, you remember, I remember coming up there and sitting at the table playing Yahtzee, oh, me, yeah. you, your mama, and maybe Donna, J.C.'s sister, yeah. would sit there and play Yahtzee, and uh, uh, what else, Rook? Rook. Uh, foosball. You remember going, coming over and playing foosball? Oh, y'all did have a foosball table, didn't you? Oh, yeah. We had tournaments. <laughs> and uh, we used to have fun. We'd play up until 2 o'clock, and that's when your mom, Carolyn, would have to go pick J.C. up. Yeah. Where was it? At the Allstate? Uh, at that time, yeah, probably. I believe it was. At the Allstate, she'd, we would sit there and play until she had to leave, and I'd have to come home. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that was fond memories, though. Oh, yeah. All right, Steve Dawkins. We appreciate it, Steve. Good to be with you, brother, man. Let's do this. Uh, Steve Dawkins, y'all. See ya. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> roll, roll tape.
Steve's Pawn in Summerton. He buys and sells gold and silver, has all kind of tools and machines, shotguns and handguns, Blu-rays, DVDs, gaming systems, laptops, flat screen TVs. Steve's Pawn in Summerton. Henry Lavoy of Razzmatazz. Me and Henry met at one of my, at that time, one of my sponsors, Mountain View Golf Course in Graysville. And uh, I interviewed him, but he also brought some of his memorabilia from all his past bands. Uh, Bo Ditch, uh, Rockin' Rebellions, Chair, a uh, whole bunch of stuff he brought. And he went through every bit of it with me. And it shows how many big bands that they played uh, played with there at the uh, Porto Armory and stuff. You need to see this. Play close, close attention, okay? Henry Lavoie and his memorabilia. You started? Yeah. Okay, the, the, the first poster right here is Chair playing with the uh, Almond Brothers at a Porto Armory, believe it or not. And it was the first time that uh, a UAB Student Government Association put on a dance. It was us and buttermilk and the almonds, and it was $3 to get in back then. $3. And this is just a picture of chair that was with the almonds. This is a group called Spirit that was out. We were bow ditched then. I'm just going through real quick. These plaques here were the plaques that they, I was in the second class of the Birmingham Record Collectors um, that they put me in the hall, Hall of Fame. And this is the Rebellions in 2008, and they put us in in the hall, so I'm in there twice. Here's some posters I brought when Bob Seger, we played with Bob Seger on the Christmas show, and it's us and uh, uh, Bob Seger's system back then with Amboy Dukes and the Youngins and MC5. This is the Rebellions with Mitch Ryder and Detroit Wheels in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, here's a group chair at a Woods Quad in, in Birmingham, and another one with Wet Willie in Bow Ditch, which was uh, in Brownwood and Swamp Angel. And there's just a rebellion uh, poster with any way the wind blows all the way around, one of our records. And uh, here is another one with Chair, the group that I went to. I'll get into that in just a second when I move this over. Uh, here, is, here is Chair with Warner Brothers. This is out in California when we signed with... Uh, Warner Brothers and uh, was with them. Our friends came down from San, San Francisco and brought us a Grateful Dead poster that was actually tacked up on their poles out there. And uh, this is, well, this is my first pay paycheck. Of course, that's my wife. Oh, I got brought the picture of her, but this is the first. Uh, it was $125 we made for the counts on one of our first jobs. <laughs> that we made 1963. And this is uh, when we played for the daughters, sons and daughters of the 60s, which was uh, about the policemen that had lost, uh, that were lost, and we played for their children and stuff, and all the groups from back then, even my brothers on there, Al Lavoie. And uh, this is a ripped up poster with Wet Willie and Bo Ditch and us playing at Foster Auditorium. And now we get to this book, and uh, this is a tough 20 survey of VOK, and us being being uh, won the Battle of Bands. This is a Rue Moore's record rack. Anyway, the wind blows is number one. Old to Billy Joe was number two. <laughs> uh, that's a now day razzmatazz. Let me get through these. This is Holiday Beats, the Counts, in '63. Here is the Rebellions right here doing a New Year's Eve show, and that's us sending this out with our record all over. This is the Rebellions at the Cloud Room, and here's the Rockin' Rebellions at uh, uh, St. Aloysius School. Uh, just some stuff that got stuck in there. Uh, boom Boom Room here, raise money for March of Dimes. This is the big hair rally when they want you to cut your hair when you went to college and all these bands played to get a lawyer. It says parents are invited even if they're bald. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
dollar admission. This is us on the Big Bam show. Herman's Herman's, Billy Joe Royal, Lou Christie, The Who, Every Mother's Son, The Rebellions. They put our picture up. I don't know why we had the biggest spot, but they did, and we appreciate it. <laughs> and then the More Rebellions is a fashion show for Loveman's, remember, the department yep. store. This is us winning the Battle of Bands right here with Dan Brennan and Hal Hodges and I forgot the other guy's name, but anyway, this is us. Uh, this is us being added to the show with the uh, Young Rascals and Union Gap, which we talked about, Billy Joe Royal and Brotherhood. And this is us with Dan Brennan right here when we won the battle. And then this is some pictures of stars that's coming to the shower, stars. And then uh, more pictures. And then the Rascals, us added to the show. Um, uh, Let's see, here's the Herman Hermit Show. Lou Christie, Sam the Sham, Pharaohs, the Rebellions. Here's Would You Like to Go, which was our third third record, and that was recorded at Sam Phillips Studio uh, in uh, Memphis, the Sun Studios. And there's some, uh, here's an early band when I was like 18, Charles Smith and his Ram Chargers. Um, here is a group called Bowditch. Um, them guys play with the Almond. He played with uh, Dickie Betts when Great Southern. Here's another Rebellion picture in our Nehru jackets back then. <laughs> and another Tough 20 survey and us being added to the Shower of Stars. Um, here is a WKUL Coleman. Um, Beatles were number one, and the Rebellions were number two right here. <laughs> anyway, the wind blows. And uh, let's see. Uh, don't have it. Let's see what's back here. More. These are more of the magazine stuff here that we were in. Uh, this is us at the Jimmy Orr's End Zone in Atlanta. This is us in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, here's a Woods Quad with Chair, Days of the Week, Warm, were very good bands. There's a story of Char, not Chair. And here's another at a Porto with a Hydra from Atlanta and So But So What, which uh, the, the uh, Weber brothers who work with me now are in that band. And this is me playing drums on the Bob Seger System show at uh, Boutwell. And here's another shot for, here's us playing with the Tams. The night, I got married the night before to Lynn. And uh, then we went on the road immediately. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even know we got married, but we did. Here's us signing with Warner Brothers under New Dawn Management and Cashbox Magazine. Uh, here's Chair right here. And this building's weird because it's a, the bu this building that looks like it's torn down is where they were going to build the Civic Center back then. This is Bowditch right here. Here's that same poster of Spirit and Bowditch. Then later I got into the lounge group of the Distortions right here, and we played all the major hotels and stuff, even in uh, Carolando and Orlando and um, this in uh, Fort Walton. And then I had a group called Henry Lavoy and Family right here, and we played a place called the Round Table Lounge in Homewood. This is the group right here. And um, this is us winning, going back to Razzmatazz, us winning the, one of the main groups for TNN on Nashville Radio Station. And uh, that's my wife's lips. <laughs> And here's an early Rasmataz right here. And here is a, you'll like this, that's a Rockin' Rebellions. That was our main photo. And this is the Rebellions playing at the Cloud Room in 66 right there. And um, this is us when we signed with Warner Brothers. Chair did. Went to Los Angeles. Us in the, uh, yeah, let's see. I, I think that's about. I think that's about it. You want to know that? Well, there's the bow ditch. You already seen that. Um, 
here's some hair. There's bow ditch right right here. And uh, oh, I met. I got to meet uh, Buddy Rich. And the first uh, first here's a, sec a second razzmatazz right there. And this is the first razzmatazz right here. This one we formed in 80, 87 right here. And uh, mm, more surveys. I've got so much stuff, I guess. Here's another rebellion with our Nehru jackets on. This is us, me and Glenn Butts, playing on the, uh, the Bob Seger show. And here is uh, another picture of Bo Ditch right there. And uh, here is a, the first chair with Glenn Wood instead of Glenn Butts. And, uh... All right, now me and Sassy Sonia, we're going to be going back up to Fort Payne probably in April. And uh, we're going to do a little piece on that new exhibit that I, Group Alabama's got there at the museum. So y'all check it out when it, when it's up, when it airs, okay? And uh, don't forget AMS-Production.com. Check that website out. We're fixing to put a new merchandise store in there where you can get t-shirts and stuff, order t-shirts. And also, I'm thinking of putting a new page on there on the radio show again. I do songwriters on that radio show. So it'll be like a 30-minute radio show. So y'all wait for that, okay? And... uh Man, doing this show, I get to meet a lot of legends, just like Jimmy Johnson, the Kentucky Headhunters, with on their, their bus, man, just talking to them, sitting there, old Coo Carroll, and uh, of course, Sally Gentry, uh, Jimmy Johnson, we get to meet a lot of legends, okay? So, y'all need to keep up with the show, because you ain't no telling what you might see on here, just like my shout out. Crazy girl, go to bar 31 and meet that woman. You'll like her, I guarantee you. Crazy girl and Ken. You got Tom and Fred down at Dora. Man, you got Creighton Hodges kids, Nathan and Brooklyn. Uh, Madison, Kayla, and Jamarcus. That's Sassy Sonia's kids, y'all. And, uh, wow, it's, it's good. And a lot of my hosts, my past host and Sassy Sonia, they found out doing this show is really hard. You get tongue-tied a lot. So I'm going to show you a few of them. Here's the bloopers. Classic for... <laughs> Holy bones, Sonia. Get it. Okay. And listen. Listen. Just listen to me. Are you listening? Now. <laughs> <laughs> now what? TK in the right pieces. <laughs> It'll turn it on or off. Another one with the rolling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a little info for you here. Did you get all that? Well, all right then. George. <laughs> what? I want to say like us, us here at AMS is looking forward to the year. Stay right there. You don't want to miss.